Hello, Idaho, and welcome. Thanks for joining us today for our virtual STEM Matters Celebration Week. Today, we have a very special treat for you. We have a little discussion with some of the Idaho legislature's STEM caucus leadership. And today, I, Crispin Gravatt, the research and data analyst for the Idaho STEM Action Center, am joined by Dr. Caitlin McGuire, the interim executive director of the STEM Action Center, as well as Representative De Mordaunt. Thank you both for being here. Thank you, Crispin. We're so excited to have Representative De Mordaunt with us, and hopefully in a little bit, Senator Lent will join. And we will have a discussion today about STEM in Idaho. So thanks everybody for tuning in. So to kick things off, Representative, tell us a little bit about your background and your current role. Uh, thanks, Caitlin and Crispin. So pleased to be able to be here. Um, it's uh, great to be able to um, be in this space in education and and also in my legislative work. Um, you know, it my involvement uh, really kind of goes back to um, the launch of a charter school um, out in um, the West Ada School District, um, where I live, and that is North Star Charter School. So years ago, uh, my husband and I were founders of that school that is now um, the largest charter school in the state and um, was focused on, um, you know, so, uh, some of our founders, uh, you know, in education in terms of founders, but has really identified itself in terms of uh, advanced math. Um, and uh, we have been very pleased to have our own children attend that along with uh, a thousand other students on an annual basis. So that really is, um, you know, some of where I was. Um, I served for many years, almost a decade on the um, Charter School Commission. So I was was just very pleased to be involved in uh, seeing some of these STEM focused charter schools develop. Very proud of the STEM focused um, schools that are in my own neighborhood in my district, uh, schools of choice um, and uh, like uh, Gal, uh, Gal, oh gosh, um, we have several in ours, so I won't name names, um, but uh, we have several in our district that are STEM focused that have been terrific. So that really is my background. And and I was very pleased to be able to bring that perspective to the legislature. Thank you for that. And just to follow up, um, what does STEM uh, matter to you as an elected official? And why um, do you lead the STEM caucus? What is your passion there? You know, I think that it's so important that um, we are all pulling in the same direction in terms of delivering a 21st century education for our, our kids. And we just, we know that, um, you know, the jobs of the of today, honestly, and the future going forward, those jobs are um, going to be uh, STEM related. We, we see the numbers, uh, we know how important it is to our economy, uh, but personally, we want our kids to be able to have that flexibility of a STEM education that really allows them to be in healthcare, um, you know, high tech companies, tr truly the jobs that of uh, today and tomorrow will have to have that STEM foundation. And so, um, you know, selfishly, I want to be able to keep uh, my six kids returning to Idaho. Um, and I think that I would speak for a lot of constituents. We want to have um, Idaho students prepared to uh, for the jobs of tomorrow so that they can um, raise their own families in Idaho as well. Awesome. So it sounds like a lot of your background and interest in this sort of STEM pipeline idea came from your in introduction to schools and your investment in your children's future. So thinking about that connection, what are some of the uh, initiatives that you've been involved with related to STEM? Um, great question, Crispin. You know, I was very pleased very early on um, to be able to work in this space and bring forward initiatives and legislation. So um, one of the first pieces of legislation I uh, brought forward was really born out of um, my own sons. Again, it gets very personal very quickly, doesn't it? But um, it, it really was that he was not able to, there was only one class, computer science class offered at his 
his school uh, one hour a day. And he was not able to uh, get in it. You know, it was going to be another year or two before he was able to, to get in that um, uh, class. And I saw that we need to offer more computer science classes, even that introductory computer science class in, um, in more schools. And so I did bring forward a bill that, um, you know, gave a little bit of time, worked with stakeholders um, and education stakeholders uh, to just hit hopefully the sweet spot um, uh, in terms of requiring that every school offer computer science, whether that be an online course. And of course, some of our rural um, schools definitely had to start there with offering those. But my goodness, we have just seen that, um, you know, turn into offerings around the state. Every high school has something on its um, uh, its course offerings to allow for kids to have computer science, um, you know, but Computer science is not the only thing in terms of, of STEM, right? So we've also, I've also been able to um, sponsor legislation in terms of a STEM diploma. Um, and that's just empowered our students around the state when they have identified and taken certain courses in STEM that they can have that designation on their diploma. And talk about being able to quantify um, their excellence to future programs, whether that be you know in high tech or otherwise, but certainly um, for colleges, that was important for these students to be able to say, hey, this is my skill set that I've developed in STEM and, and, and it says so on my, on my diploma. So that was great. Um, STEM school uh, designation, we um, it worked very closely, of course, with the STEM Action Center on that. And that, I think, was a move in the right direction to be able to have STEM schools, uh, that designation, you know, uh, develop some uniformity um, and and clarity on what a STEM school is um, through that designation bill. And then, of course, we continue uh, to support in funding um, our, our STEM Action Center. So those have been things that I've been able to work with or uh, work with the STEM Action Center on and uh, with my colleagues here. Awesome. And thank you for all of those and just how interconnected they are. That's what stands out to me. Uh, providing more opportunities to take computer science courses bumps up a little bit how many students can qualify for something like a STEM diploma to show off just how much hard work that they've put in. So thank you for your support on all of those initiatives. Well, just pleased to do it. And I think that um, our education community has just responded so well, um, really supported and embraced these things. And I think that it really does allow us you know, with these different pieces of legislation to, again, be pulling in the same direction in terms of our, you know, state leaders, our educators, and our business community. And I know, Representative, that you are involved in Idaho Codes. Uh, do you want to speak a little bit to that and, and how it was rolled out during this year? You know, that, that was just a uh, terrific and very serendipitous um, uh, experience. We really had a lot of synergy around this Idaho Codes. And again, um, born out of personal experience and the experience of, of friends and neighbors, you know, last spring, um, obviously when, when we were, um, you know, on lockdown, um, I think parents quickly realized, hey, we need things for our kids. You know, certainly teachers were stepping up to the plate and trying to provide everything they could. But there was more time. Students had more time on their hands. Uh, saw it again with my own two um, the high schoolers that I had. And um, became aware of a terrific nonprofit um, that uh, functioned, that it, functions in several states, um, the Ken Garf Foundation, um, uh, Keys to Success, Success in Education is their widely known name, but started with, by the Garf Family Foundation. Um, and they very generously put up, um, uh, invested in Idaho in terms of um, uh, bringing coding classes, um, online coding classes uh, that have a certification that really is the first third of a coding uh, certification that is done in a six week period delivered completely online. Now, the exciting thing is that um, uh, Caitlin, you and your team, uh, Crispin, you guys stepped up and supported 
supported that effort in a major way, um, as well as industry. And um, we had terrific partners in that that in that also were incredibly generous, and we were able to offer this six to eight week course um, online, got it off the ground by April 1st. The governor very kindly helped us announce and, and um, introduce that program to Idahoans throughout the state. And we had 2,000 students participate in that. And, um, and you know, to think of 2,000 students being able to get that certification, that first step, many of them that had never coded before, uh, was just really a, a terrific program. And, and Idaho Codes was born out of that. Um, Idaho Codes will continue to look for and develop opportunities like that for um, students, again, the, um, with that partnership between uh, STEM Action Center and our, our community, our, our tech community. Yeah, absolutely. And this has been just one example of a really powerful way that folks in all segments of life can join together to boost our STEM profile as a state, whether it's industry coming into partner or parents and families really getting involved and, and boosting learning at home. So mm -hmm. as we're looking forward and thinking of other ways that folks are going to be able to engage in STEM education and workforce development, uh, what are what are some ideas that you have for ways that folks can get involved? You know, in terms of the community, I would just say, um, you know, uh, we we really um, have a great support from tech companies, but it can't only be tech companies. Really, it has to be, you know. Almost any job again today um, is uh, involves those st or, or uh, you know requires those STEM skills, and so again we we need a, you know if, if 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 there are any industry leaders or you know um, business owners out there you know if you think I'm too small or I'm not or I don't or I don't uh, you know have a high tech component to my company, you know, think again, STEM matters to you. It does. And so the more, again, that we can c connect, um, you know, our private companies, um, you know, when they are looking at the, the workers that they need um, today and going forward, um, we all need to be engaged uh, in that. Now, when you talk about families and, and parents, I'll tell you, STEM Action Center makes it very easy for, for um, parents to connect um, to those opportunities in their community. Um, and so, you know, it's a, it's a click, click here and you can find out what is going on. And that really, I, I, I love the, the placement um, really in, of the STEM Action Center in terms of it being in the executive office um, under the governor. Uh, it, is, it is an umbrella and it is the point of contact and, it, and to, to raise it to that level and have it um, uh, where it is, it just speaks to the commitment of the executive and the legislative branches in terms of really putting resources and putting a one-stop shop in place for families, parents, students, and of course, educators to go to to say, how do I? So um, if I sound like a cheerleader, <laughs> uh, I, can. I, I am, and that is because both a parent's perspective, business owner's perspective, and and certainly a legislator's perspective. It it helps. It moves this forward in having one stop stop. Thank you for those comments, Representative. And uh, just so you all know, at the bottom of the screen, there's our website to learn more about how you can get involved. And one of our current initiatives is STEM at Home, where you can get daily activities. Um, in STEM education for the parents that are listening. Um, as we're discussing our communities coming together uh, to support STEM, what do you see or what do you hope for the future of Idaho's economy and how does STEM play into that? Um, you know, again, uh, I, I'm probably sounding like a broken, broken record, but I just can't say it enough. You know, we do have to support um, our educators and education uh, that 
has to happen. Um, you know, we can do things out, outside of the classroom, but really those resources, we need those resources in the classroom as well. And, um, and that in part comes from uh, our professional development opportunities for our educators. Um, at, when we look at the economy, you know, I, I don't even want to say five years, two years, five years, 10 years down the road, we have to have students that are prepared to to operate in that economy and um and i believe that we we have been a leader certainly with you know um our our big companies like micron and hp very early on um were were companies that invested and and saw that vision of the connection between education and jobs, and they set us on a terri terrific path. Um, I, certainly, our Idaho Tech Council has filled in and continued that vision. Um, but when we look forward to um, econ our economy, it is going to be more and more based on um, technology, and and we have to have students um, that are prepared for that. And uh, so I think that that there are tremendous opportunities. And I would say that is both in our uh, um, you know, cities and towns, but also in our rural communities. You know, I like to say that if we really want kids to be able to stay in their hometown of, you know, two, three hundred, uh, two, three thousand, or of course, you know, the Treasure Valley. But if we want them to be able to stay technology, jobs in the tech sector being fluid um, and, and competent in those skills um, is just going to enable that and keep our um, incredible rural communities live and thriving. Absolutely. And there's one story that I really love to tell that just brings that point home. Uh, we have an educator, a music educator, who uh, coaches a robotics team out in Jerome, Idaho. And one of her students was able to take some of the concepts that they learned about computing and robotics and think, hmm, how can I bring this home? How can I apply this to something that is happening in my community, in my family? And they actually thought about their family's dairy, their dairy farm, and how they can take those computer science and coding models and concepts and problem solving skills to help build their family's dairy business. And that's just one example about how something that we may not think exactly is a STEM field uh, can actually be boosted and made better by applying some of these interdisciplinary concepts. So I think you hit the nail on the head with that last point. Thank you. Yeah. Example. Great example. Kristen, um, I believe we have Senator Lent who will be joining us. Can you check in on that? Sure. And I'll ask Representative another question while we bring him in. But what are your uh, biggest concerns for the future of STEM education and workforce in Idaho? And where do you feel we should direct our efforts there? You know, uh, the thing that goes through my head at night is, are we doing enough? And are we doing it quick enough? So. Um, you know, are we doing enough? Are we doing quick it, it quick enough? Um, you know, certainly that takes um, in part from you know the legislative perspective uh, funding, but it also takes vision and commitment. And um, you know, I think that that we have done some things right to set ourselves on the path. Are we doing them? quickly enough? Um, are we offering enough opportunities? Um, you know, certainly our CTE offering has increased and those have increased in our engineering and, and math and science for sure, hands-on opportunities. But, um, you know, that, that, has to, that has to permeate all of education. We have to increase those opportunities um, so our students are prepared. And so I guess what I'd say is uh, we probably can't do it fast enough and we can't probably do enough, but we sure are gonna keep trying. Couldn't agree more and the urgency is there and we are all working together collectively to, to do what we can and make a difference. So thank you for those comments. Is there anything else you'd like to add? 
Well, I'm very pleased to be um, joined uh, by Senator Lint. Uh, he is uh, the co-chair of the, the STEM caucus here. Um, we meet regularly during the session and uh, again, inform and educate our colleagues um, that uh, of, of what is happening and the potential again for um, increasing STEM awareness, activity and education um, in our state. And so it's been very nice to um, partner with uh, the Senator in terms of uh, forwarding STEM in our state. Oh, we can't hear you, Kristen. And my microphone should be back on again, hopefully. Thank you again so much for all of your wonderful support for STEM education and STEM workforce development. I think that it's going to really have a, a really powerful impact on Idaho's economic prosperity in the long run and the pro professional and personal development of Idahoans all across the state. So we really appreciate your support. You're welcome. You're welcome. Thanks for joining us. And it looks like the legislative session is a little bit too busy for Senator Lent today. So we'll try to catch up with him at another time. But we really appreciate your time today and sharing um, your viewpoints on STEM education. Thanks. You're welcome. Thank you. Bye. All right. Well, Caitlin, let's give folks a quick overview of some of the other things that we're going to be doing for our virtual STEM Matters Celebration Week. We have some fantastic events lined up uh, in the coming days uh, while we wait potentially for Senator Lent to wrap up some of his existing work, important work as a legislator. Uh, so what are some things that folks can expect to see down the road? Sure, so we are gonna have some great interviews with our industry partners coming up over the next couple of days. We are also going to be talking to representatives from Workforce Development Council, as well as Commerce and Labor to talk about uh, workforce outlook and economic outlook. And then each day um, with in partnership with CBS2, we're gonna have uh, events or demonstrations of STEM activities you can do at home. And that'll be each morning at 11 o'clock with CBS's meteorologist. That is so exciting. I am so excited to see some of the STEM at home, those hands-on activities that I'll be able to uh, take and experiment with on my own as well. So very important to continue to be a lifelong learner, I believe. Absolutely. And if you want to learn more about what we're doing, please follow us on our Facebook page or go to our website, stem.idaho.gov, as we continue to uh, roll out these events. And unfortunately, I don't think Senator Lentz can be able to join us today. So we will try to catch up with him um, at a later date. But that's how live Facebook works, right? That certainly is. And we are all keeping busy schedules to boost our STEM profile here in Idaho. Thank you so much to Dr. Caitlin McGuire, the Interim Executive Director over here at the Idaho STEM Action Center. I'm sure we will catch up with you later on this week. Sounds good. Thanks, Crispin. Yeah. And thank you all for watching at home. Be sure to like and subscribe, share our videos so that we can Take our virtual STEM Matters Celebration Week as far and wide as possible. All right, I look forward to seeing the rest of you throughout the week. Until then, take care.